Thank you. Uh, let me share my screen and well, let's just say I've had some I interesting technical difficulties over the past few minutes. I've e even had to change computers. Uh, well, uh, right now y'all should be seeing a, a, a picture of a trolley. This happens to be from Denver Airport. I gave a talk similar to this back in 2018 it, in Denver to, to the Society for Technical Communication. We arrived at Denver Airport. We got on a trolley. We heard this voice, this distinguished voice saying, you are delaying the departure of this train. We heard that and I thought I had to incorporate this in the, into the talk and it worked. Uh, and I, it wanted to incorporate it because it was an example of error text that I, I didn't realize that really is important. And with that, let's, I can get to the right screen since I changed computers. Let's start the talk. UI text, simplicity can be a pain. I try to be aware of accessibility, so let me spell out the URLs for my talk. In this case, slides.com slash mic dash one slash UI dash text dash, dash cobalt. And if you're listening live, slash live. I first gave this talk back in 2017 when I was just learning about UI text. I was one of 10 writers. We worked with one designer on four different products. So the workload for UI text wasn't that big. At the next company, I was one of 12 writers working with 36 designers. I had a bigger workload of UI text. Today at Cobalt, we could easily be overwhelmed with UI text requests. Until a couple of months ago, it was just me as a writer with nine designers and 10 PMs all throwing UI text my way. And since that would overload me, I thought, hey, I need to teach everyone more about the principles of UI text. So I got back into it. Real life. If you work with the B2B products, as many of us with Rethodox do, they're complicated. But when we create a UI, when people use the UI, are most users interested in the complications? No. I mean, I suggest like us, most users lack time. They want just enough info to meet their needs. They may keep more product features in their back of by their minds for later, but that's all. The art of getting to simplicity in UI text, and yes, it's an art, it requires an in-depth knowledge of your product and a willingness to leave out edge cases. Thus my title, because getting to simplicity is difficult. If you're doing research, simplicity in UI text is also known as microcopy, but more lately it's known as content design. Why did I start getting into UI text? Several years ago, we had the company I worked for had a rudimentary UI. Around 2014, we decided to take our UI more seriously. So I started looking critically at our existing UI text and saw this. I thought, gosh, this is hard to read. And then it struck me. It reminded me of the blue screen of death. I thought, oh my God, there are blue screens of death all, all over the place. What am I going to do about it? Well, we figured something out and I'll tell you the story shortly, but eventually I moved along to Cobalt and I found more of these examples. Here we go again. New company, same song, but a few years later, I have more materials to work with. We have Tori Podmireski's strategic writing for UX. If you're part of the Write the Doc Slack, you'll you might be part of the book club that I've been running for that, and I've been running a parallel book club to help teach our designers and our PMs more about UI text. 
I've given this talk for a number of different audiences before, and I've had a number of different people in such audiences. And at this point, I'm going to uh, prompt y'all to, well, I mean, most, uh, most of you, since this is a Write the Docs meetup, will be technical writers. If you're not a technical writer, post it in the chat. Tell me who else you are, what, uh, whether, you, whether you're part of, uh, interested in UI text. Aha, we have a program manager. And there are probably a few others. Just go to the next slide. I gave this talk at the open source convention back in 2017. And to give you a sense of the audience, at that point, I was the only tech writer in the room. When you think about UI text, you have to realize everybody's interested. But now that I've jumped into details, I'm going to step back and tell you a little bit about myself. Today, I'm a, te a staff technical writer for a company called Cobalt. Uh, we do pen penetration testing as a service. I created their first product documentation, and part of my mission as a tech writer is to create complete, accurate documentation. Dot, dot, dot. I have that for a reason. That'll become clear shortly. I've written a few technical books, mostly on Linux. These are two of the most prominent. Yes, I'm a Red Hat certified engineer, and that means I'm certifiably crazy for text configuration files. When I've done this talk for an audience of US UI designers, almost universally, they roll their eyes. And yes, they should, because text configuration files are the antithesis of good UI text. So why did I get into graphical UIs? Let's make a comparison. On the left, we have a JSON file. We commonly see JSON output from APIs. That's RESTful APIs. On the right, we see the UI representation as such. What do you prefer? What do users prefer? If you take it, depending on your audience, they'll prefer both. But in most cases, even front-end developers will prefer the UI because it's easier to read. It helps them save time. When we're talking UIs and UI text, I want you to remember this mantra, make every word earn its place. It's how you'll avoid walls of text. It's how you'll avoid reminding people of the blue screen of death in your UIs. When I started working with UI text, um, I mean content design, I started feeling like this kid from the movie The Sixth Sense, if you remember that movie in, in 99. I see bad UI text everywhere. I mean, you've seen them on if I can get this to work, you've see, seen them on billboards, on street signs, on airplanes, and yes, on UIs. If you have to go to the bathroom, you think you know how to lock the door, but maybe not in the UK. A friend shared this picture from a UK train bathroom. If you have to go, you think you know how to lock the door, but do you want to read a procedure? I don't think so. I'm supposed to fly to Berlin at the end of next month for a company meeting. I'm not sure that'll happen. Another story. So, but imagine you check into your hotel. At check-in, they give you the card key. They see Mr. Jang. You're in room 713. You look at the at this elevator and think, wait a second, where's the second where's the seventh floor? There's a placard in here. What does that all mean? 
it didn't fix the bad design. You're back from Berlin or wherever you went. You filled out some crazy expense report. You've finally gotten approval and you see this extracted for payment. Yeah, I know extracted is a normal database term, but it's also a painful reminder of things like a visit to the dentist, or if you're so unfortunate, a visit to a place like Guantanamo. And I noticed somebody went mentioning parking signs. They must have seen the next slide. It's in the same category. Imagine trying to read all of this in the 1.5 seconds that you have before someone honks at you. And I'll share a secret. These are actually simplified parking signs. Now for something a bit more technical. If you know the kill-9 command, you know that command sometimes leaves orphan processes. And if you're a sysadmin, you might also know that you can eliminate those orphan processes with cookies. Well, someone actually decided to combine these facts in a UI. I mean, really? Kill orphans with cookies? Who, who decided to put that in a UI? But that's not the worst content design that I've ever seen. This is from a situation that breaks my heart. We saw it back in January of 2018. This UI screen is from the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency. Imagine you're a government official in that agency. Surf's up. You decide it's time to go to the beach. You have this on your smartphone. You get a notification. Somebody's asked you to send out an Amber Alert. You think you can tap the right thing, but instead you tap PACCOM CDW. What is PACCOM? It's the Pacific Command of the United States Navy. So what happened when the unnamed official selected the wrong link? Everyone in the state of Hawaii got this notification on their mobile device. UI text is important. Now that I've made the point, how do we make things better? I've subdivided my lessons into 10 steps to better UI text. If you really want to learn with, to work with UI text, you need to know your product. If you don't, you're just making stuff up, and that no, does nobody any good. Remember my mission statement from way back? Yes, to create excellent UI text, I got to know my product. And you'd think you'd want a complete, accurate description of functionality. But where does that lead? It leads to text that looks like this. Do you think that's good UI text? Well, you already know what I think about this. And I'm going to hint at one more criteria. Can you read this all in one breath? Okay, let's give it a try. The source object qualifies for target object and there's no link from that. Well. I think you get the point. What made this text worse from my point of view, the help text came straight from the docs. The UI designer thought he was doing something sensible. I mean, he was overloaded. We had one designer and tech, 10 tech writers. So he took it from the docs and said, Mike, this looks good to me. I thought, oh my God. Today, things, uh, things are different. I'm at Cobalt, we have two writers, and it's actually now 10 designers. We need all the help we can get creating better UI text from scratch. So we don't, 
see less of situations like this, where we have walls of text, where we have things that make people feel like they're reading the blue screen of death. What we really need is UI text that meets user needs, that avoids the complications of the, uh, of the choices of, of that piece of furniture on the left. We want just enough UI text to help users do their jobs. So if you're trying to help users do their jobs, you want the point of view of a user. And what do users want from their UIs? They say almost universally, don't make me think. And if you know the term and uh, understand the design field a little bit, you might be familiar with this book, Steve Krug's Don't Make Me Think. It's mostly for UI designers. It's got a great chapter on UI text. And if you want to be involved in UI teams, it's a great book for you to read to understand the perspective of the UI designer. But sometimes you should make users think. This is a road sign from just before a bridge in Georgia. Imagine you're in a semi driving down the road. You hear this sign rattle on the top of your cab and you're going to start thinking. And if you're rational, you might just stop in time to prevent a situation like this. So how do we get to that simplicity? How do we get to the Zen of good UI text? There's actually a guide that suggests the limit of help text of 17 words. Strategic writing for UX actually suggests a maximum of four lines, 50 characters each. That sounds like about 17 words, but I'm going to posit a, a, a third option, one easy breath. If you go beyond that breath, you're going to stress out your users, and that is not Zen. I mean, seriously, can you read that in one easy breath? Or does it raise your blood pressure? Well, I think for most people, when they see a wall of text, they'll react this way. Edward Munch is the screen. So what can you fit into one easy breath? I suggest two thoughts. It could be a cause and an effect like the sign before the bridge in Georgia, cause and effect with two effective thoughts. If you hit this sign, cause, you will hit that bridge, effect. Even Microsoft learned this lesson eventually. They learned, don't make the user think, at least not too much. The new blue screen of death is easier to read as it follows the same concept. Cause, your PC ran into a problem that it couldn't handle, and effect, and now it needs to restart. This may be an odd thing for a tech writer to advocate, but here at Cobalt, being even just one of two writers, I feel this more than ever. The purpose of UI text is to help people do their jobs without reading the docs. So I'm happy to focus on UI text because it prevents problems later and unhappy users who try to read documentation to solve their problems. What's a good experience with a UI? That's a UI that explains itself. If you have to explain the different options in a UI in your documentation, I think such UIs are a failure. Well, maybe that's an extreme position, but I once worked for a chief engineer who suggested, Mike, if you have to document the UI, I want you to file a bug. 
And seriously, there are obvious cases where docs aren't required. I mean, if you look at this, do you need to dock any of this? Well, maybe if you're doing it as part of a use case story, such as something related to an auth token, but if you're trying to help the users sign in, it should be self-explanatory from the UI itself. I presume most people here have mobile devices or smartphones. How many of you have read a doc for how to use an app? You're welcome to volunteer in, in, in chat if, if you feel that way. When I've done these presentations to a physical audience, usually 3% of people raise their hands. While that may be true, it's not what you want. You want most users to be able to use your app without having to read docs. I mean, seriously, anytime your users have to read a doc, that's a failure in the UI. Maybe that's unfair, but that's the expectation set by mobile apps. Thus, my premise here, UIs that require documentation are buggy. Remember the subtitle of my talk, Simplicity is Difficult. Why? It depends on your audience. If you're using a UI and you, you know, if you work with UI designers, you know they all rely on personas. This is the persona I created when I started at Cobalt. I figured, okay, what's the lowest common denominator? Maybe that's unfair, but the person with the knowledge that you expect for our particular UI, I posited it that it's the startup developer, a person who knows Let's, uh, let's just say it's less informed about the topics that, that we cover with penetration testing, but uses our product. That startup developer, if they see a screen like this, you won't have to explain any of this to them. I mean, if you present this to a consumer, you'd probably have to explain everything. You see host, you, a, a, a consumer might wonder, okay, am I hosting a party, a port, or is that for a cruise ship, start TLS, whatever that means. But if you present this to a startup developer, they'll know, oh yeah, I put, put a host name there, I have a port number, I know what start TLS means. Getting to UI text, that can be a journey. Everyone th thinks they know what should go into UI text, and to some extent, they're all right. So if you're dealing with UI text, you'll feel the joy of negotiating with a bunch of stakeholders. And before you negotiate with such stakeholders, you got to know what they're looking for. This is my list of stakeholders. Yours may vary. I see product managers involved in UI text. I mean, there are some product managers that want to write paragraphs of UI text to try to try to fit into our UI. We have, let's just say, interesting discussions, but they're trying to push products that meet customer needs. They're enthusiastic. They want to show our customers how they're meeting their needs. We have the, our UI designers. To paraphrase The Big Lebowski, if you remember that movie, UI designers, they're the people who really tie the room together. 
They take the story. They set up mock-ups and wireframes that are the storyboard. They built the storyboard to, sh to describe what we think our customers want to do. They do it with style guides for consistency, so customers know what to expect. While designers create the story, it's the UI developers, the front-end engineers, who help the rubber meet the road, who code the mock-ups, the wireframes, so they actually work with the product with the code. While you're dealing with front-end developers and UI designers, you can't ignore the back-end because they're the foundation. A front-end without the foundation is bound to fail. They know how the product is supposed to work. They'll frequently have great input on what should go into UI text. When I talk to back-end developers, they're probably the most sensitive to excessive text. They, when they go into UI, all they want are the basics. They say, Mike, don't bother pl saying please or sorry or explaining er er anything. Just tell us what to do. There's support and sales. A lot of people don't use them enough, but they're frequently the ones with the best perspective on the customer point of view. The customers for, uh, for most software, if they have problems, who are they going to talk to first? Support and sales. Your tester, they review the product. They want to make sure that it meets the requirements. It's part of their testing criteria. There are also users who want to walk through every step of the process. They look at UI text with a critical you uh, with a critical eye. For me, testers are the best allies. And then, of course, there's the writer. If you're looking for a writer to create UI text, you're looking for someone who writes with brevity. I think of Hemingway at his bomber peak, who I think he would have been a great UI writer. If you, if you really wanted to do that kind of thing. After all, he wrote a series of novels, six words long. On the other hand, I think the ghost of Leo Tolstoy got a hold of Microsoft when they created the original blue screen of death. I frequently ask myself, as the writer, do I really have exclusive rights to UI text? Think again. Chances are everyone on your team has some confidence in the English language. It becomes a question of implementation. How do we implement? It can be a maze, but we can start with the quote unquote, the easy stuff. So how do we start with the easy stuff? What is that? I put that down in three categories. Functional text, typically your, your, the verb you start with, capitalization, grammar, the things that are covered with style guides. Here's an example of quote unquote easy stuff. These are quick start cards from an older version of the UI I once worked with. There are links to different parts of the UI. And now, hopefully you, you all haven't fallen asleep. We have an exercise for you. I hope that you, you all want to participate. Uh, we have this quick start card with four words. What would you do to simplify it? Yes, it's only four words, but we want to make every word earn its place. And I see, uh, see Marsha's posted, add a connector. Any other options? Add connector. New connector. That's an interesting idea.
oh, I love the ideas that are coming in. Create connector, create new connector, plus connector. Add new, that, that, that can be interesting depending on context. If the title of the page it re relates to connectors, then add new may be all you need. And what, I have some hmm, interesting idea. Can you add a use connector? And, and yes, a lot of this is context dependent. I can visualize context where all of you are right, but it, it really depends. This is to jump ahead. Uh, we made every word earn its place. And this is what we ended up doing, add connector. But what we saw, the options we saw tell us there's no, frequently no one right answer to all of this. Now for another exercise, set up password reset. And let me give you some context. This is from a administrative UI. So it's an administrator who wants to set up password reset configuration options for their users. Set up auth, that's interesting. And within this, aha, well, uh, William and one person before him got the first point that I was going for. Set up actually should be two words. Set up as one word is it is a noun. What we're looking for is an action. Thus, the two word essentially the two word verb. I guess a, a verb phrase. Set up password reset. But is that the is that the right answer? I say that because I'm hinting, are there alternatives to the word setup since this is from a administrative point of view? Enable password reset, configure authentication. Well, uh, I see a lot of options pass by and I understand a little confusion because it really does depend on context, but I've seen the right answer pass by as well. Well, at my opinion of the right answer, I've seen all, all sorts of other answers that, that could work. And it depends on the context and it depends on whether you know your product. So for this quote unquote simple exercise, here's what, uh, what I've done. I changed from add the new connector to add connector, set up password reset to configure password reset. What are the lessons here? We remove redundant words. We review and change or correct functional grammar. But once you start getting into the quote unquote easy stuff, you realize it's not that easy. Even for a simplified UI, I had a translation file of over a thousand lines. And for that first quote unquote easy stuff effort, I ended up changing over a hundred lines. It gets to be hard work, but of course that's why we have jobs. But with all of these lessons, you need to be flexible. There may be more than right answer. 
more than one right answer. You want minimal viable text. In most cases, you're okay with complete sentence, incomplete sentences. Well, that's me. Uh, both style guides say you don't need a period if you have a single sentence. Tori emphasizes you don't need perfect grammar. And most importantly, unless it's an error message, nobody wants to hear your apologies in UI text. Don't say please unless necessary. So to sum that up, you don't want to be this guy. You want to be flexible. You, you want to help people get to a better answer. Speaking of quote unquote bad grammar, it's okay to end a sentence with a preposition. The goal you're striving for. Yes, if you're a real stinkler, stickler for English grammar, you might not like that phrase. Next, it's okay to split an infinitive. What's an infinitive? It's the basic term for a verb, in this case, to go. To go is the infinitive of go or going. Uh, when you put boldly between to and go, you're splitting the infinitive. And it's okay to split the infinitive. Well, I mean, to rephrase it, imagine Jean-Luc Picard talking about to go boldly where no one has yet gone. Does that roll off the tongue? I don't think so. So it's okay to break some grammatical rules. End your sentences with prepositions. Let your infinitives. Now for some harder stuff. To get to what I would call accurate simplicity, you need to do your homework. You need to make sure that the harder UI tasks are readable and accurate. It's harder as you need to know your product. Correcting spelling or grammar is not enough. Remember this help text? If you want people to use this help, you need something that people will actually read. You could set up a link to the docs, but not everyone wants to read docs in the UI or even that. When I started changing more complicated stuff, here's an excerpt from the pull request that I used to alter those walls of text. Before and after. It seems like a simple enough change, but in the pull request, people started paying attention. These are comments from the chief architect, the product manager, and the UI lead. I thought, oh my God, they're objecting. What do I say? What do I do? I tried to reason with the chief architect. I thought I was doing okay. But then I saw the other objections, and then I realized I needed something bigger. My answer, use the context of the UI. I built the product based on the change I proposed. And I said, hey, everyone, the context already makes it clear in this case that the source is missing. And literally within minutes, the approvals for the PR started coming in and I thought, yes. So this is a, a snippet of the result. These are how the messages, how they look before. You see the walls of text. And we coupled it with some design changes in the UI. Here's how the same messages looked afterwards. A lot simpler and a lot more readable. 
Here's a use case that came up this spring. A lot of this depends on context. Uh, when we do quote unquote penetration testing as a service, our customers purchase credits. And we wanted to say, okay, you've bought new credits. Thank you for choosing to refill your credits. Now that you've seen some examples of how you, we can simplify and shorten UI text, I'd like to see your ideas. How would you rephrase all of this? How would you make every word earn its place? Humans don't say choosing to refill. Yes. Your customer success manager will be in touch so shortly, simplifying that sentence. Great. Oh, I like Miriam's option. Credits refilled. Soon, shortly, I get get that, Miriam. I mean, because words like soon and shortly imply imply a service level agreement. I love it. A lot of people suggesting good options. Credits refilled. Maybe that's all, all that's really needed. And people can go go right on to the uh, to the next screen. Um, this is basically just a snippet of the discussion we had. I showed the current text, I described my alternative, and I described a rationale that that hopefully all the stakeholders and at least most of them actually read. And I see people still coming in with great suggestions. We'll be in touch. Yep. As William suggested, Allison's suggestion is great. Just because we have limited time. Yes, a lot depends on how style. I'm going to go to the next use case. This screen is something is something we used to have when, well, I mean, it appears if you're trying to access our app with a mobile device, but it actually happens whenever you have a, a, a browser that's been narrowed to less than five inches. And a little tip for you, I actually use this screen as a question for some some interviews we did for our second tech writer uh, a few months ago. Uh, with luck, we'll be hiring a third tech writer in 2023. And if and when we do, if you get the, get the chance to interview with us, expect a question like this. How would you make every word earn its place for this kind of screen? Yep, a, an apology may be appropriate here. Use a laptop or desktop for the best experience. And to speed this along a little bit, uh, the, uh, the, uh, I've circled some of the issues that were identified. Uh, one of our discussions was that with, that with the term laptop or desktop. My opinion is that the, is that the two have, uh, have merged together. 
small screen optimization and progress. That's an interesting thought. Uh, I want to hear what people think of OK Got It. <laughs> exactly. Yes, I mean, why OK Got It? Right. And I love these exercises, but I have limited time and I know we actually want to go to breakout sessions as well. So I'm going to jump ahead and say, this is what we ended up with. I'm not perfectly happy with this. Small screens are not supported. Great. But can anyone tell me what's the problem with the word yet? Exactly. Promises. When? Is there a plan? Where's, where's the roadmap? That's what I told people. But everybody said, Mike, we want to do this. And I said, oh, all right. Let's see, this was my time for a time check. So I'm, since we're a little bit past that, I'm just going to jump ahead. You should have links to my slides for some of some of the other examples if you have minor differences with all all these people don't worry about it as long as you've made the ui text better you've done your job When you're part of a small team, you need style guides. You need to be able to scale. You need to be able to point to people, hey, look at the style guide. These are the criteria that we follow. We need you to follow these criteria before you bring the text to us. Oh, that's an interesting question, Marcia. Do you also have voice guidelines? I'm going to call an audible and say, Marsha, what, 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 what do you mean by voice guidelines? Well, it's a, maybe an aspect of your style guidelines, but sometimes it uh, has to do with um, just the, the tone that you strike or the word that you choose to, uh, like, say, we want our style to be chipper and hip. Versus we want our, our, I mean, our voice, I should say, our voice, uh, or do we want to be hip or do we want to be um, conservative and respectable? Like often the word that you choose is not only for clarity, but for the, is it going to be the kind of language your audience would use in terms of voice? I don't know. I'll stop there. I think you know what I mean. I know exactly what you mean. It's a great question. And uh, all of a sudden, I'm thinking chapter two of strategic ah. writing for UX. Uh, that uh, In that chapter, they go through examples of voice for three different apps. Perfect. One, one a formal app, another a gaming app, another a practical app for essentially for mass transit those uh, those different apps have have and re they require three different voices which describe and include the tone that, that that you need for your particular audience or persona you got it yeah hey mo i see you got it too law firm versus hip startup yeah i'll go back on mute i'm loving this so much it's great to hear this mike Thank you, Marcia. Uh, since we're coming towards the top of an hour, I'm going to push a, a little faster, but to scale what you're doing to actually get others to help you, you need style guides. And 
What do you do for a style guide? You need your audience. You need to, to understand the voice. You also need precedence. What do other competitive companies do? Do they have any good examples for you? As for audience, that depends on your persona. Our persona is that of a startup developer. Yours may be different. There are some good precedents out there. There are people who have established good style guides, but with the proviso, their style guides for their own systems and they that may not fit your use case or the voice that you want to present. And I guess I'll go over the uh, the URL for the slides later, but you'll find a link to these in, in the slides. But really, even though I recommend reading those guides, you should create your own because only you can create a style guide with examples from your UI, something that's customized for your audience, not only your audience of users, but your audience of people who create UI text so they know the good examples to follow. But these are just principles. When you include text in a UI, you're having a conversation with your users. If you hit this sign, you will hit that bridge. One thing I need to consider more is accessibility. I'm not an accessibility guru by any means, but in general, you want text that works with screen readers. I've listed a few common issues here. One of the more recent changes for accessibility is use of the word click. Microsoft has actually gone away from that, and that's pushed the industry away from the word, which surprises a lot of people. If you do create your own UI text style guide, you'll want to add options for in, in a lot of categories. I list what I think is most of them here, the style guides that I've listed, they have their own comparisons in each of these categories. Remember, you want to make every word earn its place. Let's take another look at that new blue screen of death. Do you see anything that you could simplify with this? If you're making every word earn its place? Ah, to search. Oh, I love the examples that are coming in. Since your PC ran into a problem and will now restart. Simple. Oh my gosh, that almost sounds like what I came up with. Your PC ran into a problem and will restart. Wonderful. You want human readable names when you go, go into you, your UI. This was sort of a fail with quote unquote human readable names, max number of history files. When that doesn't describe what's really happening, that's not very self-documenting and it's confusing in the UI. And with help messages, you never want to blame users. You might want, even want to say sorry. You don't want to tell people you have typed the URL incorrectly. You don't want to make people feel badly about it. But there are exceptions to that. Remember this message? 
it's sort of a warning. You are delaying the departure of this train, and the doors may close on you, so be careful. There are three different error types as described in the book. Inline errors, something you might see if you don't have enough letters in a password. Detour errors, you're in the wrong page or whatever. And locking errors, which this is an example of. And with that, we have one last exercise for y'all. UI text in apps. What would you do to shorten this statement to speed up your app? I see speed up, optimize, that's an interesting word. Get it faster, make app faster. With a word like optimize, that's really dependent on audience. For a consumer audience, I'd hesitate to use a word like optimize because it sounds like a $10 word. But if you are you have a UI for scientists, that may be the right, right word, that uh, the word that you need. These are the options that I had presented to people because I thought, I'm not sure what to say. And it's okay to present yourself as, uh, as uncertain with UI text, because the truth is there's no frequently no perfect answer. Great point, Mo. To speed up your app is missing action steps. In any case, I know I know there are some who are anxious to get to questions, so I'm going to jump here and say, don't worry about minor differences. What are the lessons learned from all of this? With the quote unquote easy stuff, you want to be consistent. With help text, you want to avoid anything that resembles the old blue screen of death. I mean, seriously, do you ever want to see this in a UI? No. When you have a, a design and a layout in a UI, that adds context. And with context, you frequently need fewer words. You want to follow established style guides because that's what people are used to. Yes, Microsoft and Google are big companies and there are many things wrong with big companies, but they establish patterns that people have seen in the past that they understand today. Nevertheless, you want to create your own style guide so you have examples from your own systems. You never want to make anyone think you're making every word earn its place. So what are these lessons learned? Consistency, avoid the blue screen of death, use context, create your own style guide, and don't make me think. I've talked to a lot of people in creating this presentation, and I'll continue to do so, especially with the book club we're running in the Write the Docs Slack. And now with that, I'm going to take some questions. Mike, that was amazing. I always love your presentations. That was really incredible. Got a friend, favorite brand new phrase to go boldly where no one has yet gone. I'm going to repeat that all the time now. I love it. 
This was really, really amazing. If anyone has a question for Mike, post it in the chat and um, I will ask him, but I'm gonna be selfish and start with one of my own while people are thinking of their own questions. I wanted to know if you, if it wasn't part of your job to do UI uh, text, maybe you're a tech writer, but you were a text is considered a separate position. Do you have any advice for people who wanted to get started uh, with UX writing, little ways that they could get started? Uh -huh. I, uh, I've been fortunate to be in places where people have encouraged me to just submit a PR mic. What, what do you think will uh, will go better? Uh, what What do you think sounds better? Submit a PR, submit a Jira or, or, or an issue request. But most importantly, when you do that, you want to be able to illustrate the difference. Uh, take a screenshot of before, take a screenshot of after. If people can see the difference, they'll say, hey, this person has something important to contribute. Love that answer. Super helpful. Um, I saw somebody in the chat is actually looking to transition into UI Writer. So great luck with that. This is a good presentation to come to. Um, related to that, someone had in the chat, if UI Writing is my favorite part of my job as a tech writer, what job listings could I look at if I wanted to do that all the time? Content manager, any other titles? Uh, lately, I've been seeing content designer a lot. Uh, uh, I mean, especially for consumer companies, there are a lot of people who need content designers to set up strategy, mostly for consumers, different, for, different than B2B but they also need to understand statistics studies how to how to formulate a essentially a polling question what to understand what kind of text works better uh and there are actually a lot of such people in a slack called content plus ux awesome that's great advice um, I'm going to ask another one of my questions. If you have a question for Mike, put it in the chat and I'll grab it. Um, I loved the part when you talked about partnering with QA, and I wonder how you made those connections across departments and organizations so that you could partner with QA. Talk to them. I mean, if you're remote, set up a coffee chat, say it talk and talk about the issues that you find in the ui uh in, in my first tech writing job i was fortunate to sit next to next to a qa and we, we talked about it all the time and i feel like he trained me to be uh, uh, uh i guess the basketball term be the sixth man of qa to actually go into a product and say could we make this better I love that. I love that. Um, Sarah Reed, you had a question that you said would be better explained out loud if you want to come off mute and ask Mike your question. Thanks, Christy. Um, yeah, definitely not a right simply question. <laughs> um, I've just been thinking at kind of the 50,000 foot level as I've been listening. And when I think about interfaces, um, I always come back to thinking about my mom, who is 89 and has never really um, has very, very limited computer literacy. Um, she uses iMessage on her laptop to send me texts, and that's about it. Um, so when she encounters interface features that may seem simple or standard to folks who already have computer literacy practices, um, she is befuddled. And when I come back, when I think about her, I think about the fact that we are becoming, you know, it's becoming more and more important to learn these assumed standards around interfaces. And it's a new kind of language that we need fluency in, in order to navigate our world. And so I guess my question is, again, this is kind of the 50,000 foot level, is 
where do we imagine that folks are learning this? Is it simply just by immersion in daily life, like my 14-year-old daughter? Um, or, you know, but then I think about my 89-year-old mom and how that definitely has not been her experience. And then, you know, everybody in between. So it's kind of a complex question, but um, I'm just curious in terms of thinking through the UI world and simplicity and also style guides and conventions. Um, how do we think about this? You, you never want to make your target user think. And if that means an 89-year-old person who has very little experience with with computers, you want to understand that persona. And that's not only do I point to strategic writing for UX, they use the example of, of a transit app, a transit app that, uh, that an older user might have to go through in order to purchase a ticket. How, how do you set up language that, that uh, such a persona can understand? Uh, but beyond that, there are apps out there where people have done studies for such personas that to actu actually simplify things, to, to gear, gear them buttons and options and descriptions for, for people who have limited facility with computers. I'm not sure if that answers your question. Definitely a start. I mean, you know, including uh, users who are brand new to all interfaces um, to as a persona is is an interesting. Um, I mean, obviously, there are going to be apps where that's not relevant. You know, if it's intended for developers or something like that, but consumer facing apps um uh, uh, yeah uh, a persona for someone who doesn't have ui knowledge coming to the interface is definitely a start well thank you mike that was amazing really really lovely presentation you always do an incredible job